So in early January of the year 2000, right after humanity just narrowly escaped the near extinction event known as Y2K, my three bandmates and I decided to take a trip to London. So for 600 bucks, we got round trip airfare, seven days in a pretty nice hotel, and all these movie and theater vouchers that we never use. Now, I wanna say that we chose London for the rich historic sites and the tapestry of culture that had spanned through centuries and centuries, but really it was because at the age of 19, we could legally drink there. And we sure did, a lot. But mostly it was a bonding trip for the band. It should be noted that as a band, we were complete Anglophiles. Oasis, Blur, The Verve. If it was British, we listened to it, okay? So at some point we decided that we were gonna take what I have dubbed as an Incepta trip. A trip within a trip. We were gonna take a train from London up north to our version of Mecca, the place where all great British music originated. That's right, I'm talking about Liverpool, England, birthplace of the Beatles. Our journey began that morning in London's Euston Station where we boarded a train and strapped in for a three hour ride up north. Three hours later, we arrived. The Beatles tour was everything we hoped it would be. Not only did we get to see all the homes where the Beatles grew up, but we got to get off the bus and take pictures at Penny Lane and Strawberry Field, not to mention that the bus you take the tour in is the actual magical mystery tour bus from the album and movie of the same name. Now, the tour ends at a sports pub on Matthew Street, directly across from the legendary Cavern Club where the Beatles started out. And while we were having a drink in said sports pub, we noticed the tour guide walk into the bar. Eddie was a big guy and super dynamic and conversational. I suppose you kind of have to be if you're gonna give a tour like that five times a day. Anyway, we offered to buy him a drink. And in exchange, he started telling us all these stories about the early 60s when the Merseyside scene was really kicking. He told us about the Beatles as individuals and personalities in the city. He even told us stuff that we didn't know. Like for instance, Paul McCartney was the one who wanted to kick Pete Best out of the band. Guys, I think we should kick Pete out of the band. He's too good looking and it'll overshadow all the other members of the group, namely me. Enter Ringo, I play the drums. He'll do just fine. So after several drinks, a rather inebriated Eddie suggested that we go across the street to the Cavern Club to meet the resident DJ. Of course, yes. And as we're descending into the basement club, you can kind of feel the history and the echoes of greatness, despite the fact that the Cavern Club was actually demolished in the 70s and then built back up brick for brick across the street. DJ Neil, to this day, is probably the coolest guy I've ever met in my life. He had this like awesome form-fitting denim jacket, this like blonde spiky hair, and he was British. So there was that. He took us on a little tour of the Cavern Club. It was like every picture we'd ever seen, the low ceilings, the archways, we were in heaven. And then we had a conversation that I'll never forget. He said, so you're a band from America? Yep. How long are you in town for? Uh, we'll probably take the last train back to London tonight. Uh, well, if you want to stick around, uh, come back tomorrow around 1 p.m. We'll see if we can scrounge you up some gear to get you on the afternoon show. Of course we had to stay, but we're five poor college kids in another country. We couldn't afford separate hotel rooms. So we walked into the first hotel we saw, and there's a kid behind the desk. We negotiated him down to 40 pounds for one room. So five people in one small hotel room, we did what poor college kids do. We improvised. We pulled the mattress off the bed and threw it on the floor. My buddy and his girlfriend slept there. There were two of us on the box spring and one of us on this tiny sofa. We all slept in our clothes, which we had now been wearing for nearly 24 hours. When we got to the club, the other bands on the bill were super generous about lending us instruments and equipment. And lo and behold, that afternoon, a dream came true. We played a 10 song set at the legendary Cavern Club where the Beatles started out. It was amazing. We played Long Tall Sally by Little Richard, which was a cover that the Beatles did in their early days. We played I Saw Her Standing There by the Beatles themselves. We played a handful of our own songs. And I gotta tell you, it was electric. I've played a lot of gigs, but to play in a legendary venue like that is kind of indescribable. Towards the end, the applause was uproarious. And I don't know if they were just pandering to the American kids, but I like to think it was because of the music or because we closed with the Backstreet Boys, I Want It That Way, which fucking killed. I will never forget that day. It is still one of the coolest moments of my entire life. I got to stand on the John Lennon side of the Cavern Club and play music. Not a ton of people can say that. 
and even less can say, I am the only one in history to ever play the Cavern Club in an Old Navy performance fleece. Hi, I'm Josh, the director and animator of Storylines. Click here for the next story, here for a playlist of all the episodes, and here to subscribe to our channel. And that's it. That's all the buttons. Have fun clicking. Thanks for watching.